Jim. Yep. It, yep. Okay. So, how many of y'all have been to Austin, Texas? Love Austin. Great town. Um, Austin has, as you know, successfully branded itself as the live music capital of the world. Now, now, now. I wasn't going to mention that that tends to piss off New Orleanians. <laughs> but it does. However, uh, Austin is, uh, v has very successfully established that brand, but not many people here certainly know about some of the issues that have arisen in the course of establishing such a, a lively music center and a hub of live music. As, and so Jim Butler is somebody who I've known for a very long time and works in the city government of Austin, Texas, and is the manager for creative industries development, but has also been at the center of all of the music industry development issues in Austin, Texas, going back, I don't know, 80, 90 years, something like that. And uh, he is... <laughs> He's an, uh, an excellent representative of his fair city, which we all know and love, and we're thrilled to have him in New Orleans, which is a town that I know is near and dear to his heart. So uh, everybody, Jim Butler from Austin, Texas. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I have had the good fortune of knowing Scott for a long time, not, maybe not quite 80 or 90 years, but a long time. And uh, fortunately for me, my, uh, my wife, um, who I've been married to a long time, uh, chose to get married right close to Jazz Fest. So I've been here at least 25 times to celebrate our wedding anniversary <laughs> right around Jazz Festival time. So I have a deep, deep, deep love and appreciation for New Orleans for many reasons. Uh, certainly the music of New Orleans is something I love, but the city in general I have a great, great, great deal of love for. Uh, so I could talk about a lot of things about what the city's done for many, many, many years to help the music scene thrive in Austin. Um, but because this particular topic is focused on culture and regulation, I want to really focus on some current programs that the city has that are very focused on trying to balance support for live music scene in Austin with an equally important uh, condition of Austin being a vibrant place, and that is our neighborhoods. So for us, by the way, quality of life is a hugely important thing in Austin. Uh, the music scene is a very, 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 very important piece of that quality of life, and so are vital neighborhoods, by the way. So I'm going to give you a little context, but then I'm going to give you some really specific things the city is doing to sort of work on helping both neighborhoods and live music at the same time. First of all, uh, th this is an important sort of context to give. Um, Austin is very, very fast growing, and that has some implications for how we do these things with live music being close to neighborhoods, for example. Um, so, you know, 10 years ago, for example, as an example, um, you could have easily said, let's have this particular area of downtown, which there weren't that many people living downtown. Let's call it an entertainment district. You could set it up that way. Now there's probably 20,000 more people from 10 years ago in downtown. So the issues are different now. That's an example. But we've grown on average roughly um, a doubling every 20 years for the last 100 years in Austin. We're now at about 100, uh, excuse me, about 825,000 people in the city limits, about twice that right around. We're now, we passed recently, passed last year, passed San Francisco to be the uh, 13th largest metro area in the United States now. It's a substantial amount of growth there. Um, another context I want to give when I get, get to the part about job creation and regulation and how we work together is the part of the city that I'm in is usually focused on job creation. It is not historically in our area to focus on regulation, but I'm going to get to how important for job creation some regulatory issues have become. So our office... Um, focuses on helping small businesses. We, and as uh, Scott mentioned, I sort of focus on what's co creative industries development over the years. That's been, there's been technology as part of that, music's been part of that, film's been part of that, gaming sector has been part of that. Uh, it, 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 creative industries is a wide and evolving definition, and I've been lucky to be working on all those things. Um, our office includes very traditional, very traditional um, economic incentives like 
Um, not too long ago, uh, Apple announced it was going to grow 3,600 jobs in Austin. We have a specific incentive program for that. We have very specific programs to help entrepreneurs and small businesses. Um, and then we have lots of, uh, lots of programs that are really focused on aspects of culture. We have many, many, many programs that are uh, more traditional to help the music scene. Same thing for film, same thing for the gaming. That's in, by the way, in Austin, that's not gambling, that's video games, those kind of games. Um, aspects of, uh, of culture. We also care very, very, very deeply about the sustainability and the vibrancy of our neighborhoods. So I'm gonna give you um, some examples, but I wanna, I wanna mention one thing that we did that was important for our elected officials to think about how important culture and creativity is in Austin. We do this on occasion. A few years ago, we did an economic impact analysis of uh, the sectors of music, film and gaming, and arts. Uh, and it was using 2010 data. And this is, this is helpful for the elected officials to have this data. Uh, and using 2010 data, which was at the time the most current data, um, there were about 49,000 jobs associated in those, creative, those various creative sectors. There was about $4.35 billion worth of economic activity related to those creative sectors. And, and of particular interest to the city uh, elected officials, there was about $71 million of tax revenue that came into the city coffers. Uh, and, and since I'm gonna talk some about music, um, the music sector had about 1.66 billion worth of economic activity. There was about 18,000 jobs and about 38 million dollars of tax revenue into the city. So when you're when you're talking about programs to support the music, or for that matter, film or gaming, etc., it's good to have data that sort of supports not just the economic side, but then there is the non-defined but very 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 important hard to quantify quality of life. So if you're talking to somebody like Apple, let's say, or somebody that has a youthful workforce, and they're talking about going anywhere in the world, they want to expand anywhere in the world, um, things like a vibrant music scene, as an example, are hard to define, but they always come up. Uh, and young, young folks who are real smart can go pretty much in, anywhere in the world they want, and they pick places that they uh, not only have good job opportunities, but they uh, have a good quality of life as well. Um, so, I, I want to I talk just a tiny, tiny bit about some really, really, really specific examples. And I'm not going to talk about, you know, a dog barking at night and what the restrictions are on that. I'm going to focus, because we have reams of re regulations related to sound in the city code. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is one specific example that is, a, I think, a good example of the kind of things we try to do to to help uh, neighborhoods and live music at the same time. Um, so here's a, here's a real specific example. So we have, um, um, in, their, in our sound code, we have um, restrictions on what we call outdoor music venues. And so if you're, and there's a very specific definition of what an outdoor music venue is, but just to get to the point about this, um, it says that in most parts of the city, um, the outdoor music can only be played to 85 decibels and it can be played between 10 a.m. and 10.30 p.m., Sunday through Wednesday, 10 to 11 on Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday, 10 a.m. to midnight, Friday and Saturday. And then a few years ago, where there were exceptions made to that. So there are two um, carved out districts, both of which were, at the time that this happened, already very well known as entertainment areas in Austin. One is on 6th Street, uh, and another is close to 6th Street in what we call the Warehouse District. And those two specific areas were particularly carved out and allowed for the outdoor music venues in those districts to play till 2 o'clock in the morning every day. So um, I'm going to use that as an example of what happened a few years ago. Um, there's also now a current requirement that any outdoor music uh, venue has to uh, apply for an annual permit. And as part of that annual permit requirement, the staff um, goes to the place, they talk to the neighbors, they do a sound measurement of the venue itself. Uh, the staff has the capability to deny the permit. The staff has the capability to say the decibel levels have to be less than 85. It has, they have this, the authority to say, um, we're gonna limit the number of people that come to your venue, depending on how we set up your permit. Um, also, 
when the uh, permit is made, any uh, residential owner within 600 feet of the uh, venue is given is given notice that an application has been made, uh, and there is a there is an ongoing effort by the staff, uh, which by the way includes not just the staff in our office but other permitting parts of the city staff, including the police by the way, uh, to have sort of ongoing regular dialogue between the owners of the live music venues and the neighbors. Um, so that is an example, a very, very specific example of kind of a, a regulation that's set up very specifically to try to find a balance between sound and neighborhood issues. Um, one other thing that's a new, it's a new pilot project. It was just adopted by our city council about a year ago, roughly a year ago, and they put a little bit of money behind it, is an effort to have city staff uh, go to particular venues that are the outdoor, I'm talking just about outdoor music venues, that are in compliance with their permit and they're still getting complaints from neighbors. So I'm going to give you three examples of how that's worked. Um, right in downtown, so I, I gave you an example of how 10 years ago downtown uh, there was a, uh, a report uh, that I was city staff for back then uh, called the Live Music Task Force Report. And one of the recommendations was to expand those two carved out districts to other areas of downtown, which, by the way, may have worked 10 years ago. Um, now, uh, I'm going to give you a current day example. So there's an outdoor music venue that's been downtown a long time. Um, there has been a lot of growth in downtown Austin. Uh, there's a new high-rise building that has some condos in it a few blocks away from a particular uh, venue called Cedar Street. Um, and so the city staff was trying to figure out a way to deal with an example of an outdoor music venue that was in compliance with the law, they were in compliance with their permit, uh, and they were still having complaints from these neighbors. What can, what can be done? So the council uh, about a year ago, roughly a year ago, uh, authorized a pilot project where uh, city staff uh, will go to uh, the venue and um, see if it is possible to either through sound engineering by moving the speakers in various ways or through a band shell, through a shell over certain parts of the sound uh, or where the sound emanates from, you know, reduce the sound in a significant way. They've now done that for three venues. Um, they've done that for Cedar Street, which is downtown. Uh, they've done it for uh, a, an outdoor venue called Black Heart that's uh, kind of the edge of downtown. It's still officially called downtown, but it's in an area that was more residential. Uh, but the uh, same thing happened. The club had a, a high-rise building grow up next to it. Uh, and then a third one is in um, a part of town that's uh, becoming a growth area. Um, and it's still more of a traditional neighborhood there now. And so this particular live music uh, venue moved into an area that was more of a neighborhood. But, all, but the, the answer was for all three of those examples, uh, city staff has gone and worked with the neighbors, worked with the venue, uh, city uh, council authorized some money as pilot. And so far, as of right now, those pilot programs have worked. So I think the next step in our effort to evolve this idea of how do we what can we do? You know, Council Member Palmer you know, mentioned what she hoped would be a solution, which would be a technological one. Um, you know, we're, we're, sort of, we're kind of looking at it that way from one standpoint, which is that the, the staff that are going and talking to the venues have some technology expertise. So that's a, that's a part of it. But the other part is, is uh, you know, as some of our other speakers have said, is, is a constant and regular and uh, normal communication between all the parties. So I want to leave those as just sort of some items for thought, but they, I do think they show sort of the evolution that takes place sort of naturally in efforts to um, support the vibrancy of Austin through supporting the live music scene, uh, in this particular case, the outdoor live music. But by the way, you know, just, to, just <laughs> about a month ago, we had about uh, oh, maybe 300,000 people visit for South by Southwest. Um, that's just another example. It has nothing to do with outdoor music, although there's lots of outdoor music. But that's a special event. That's a whole other story. Um, but, but that's an example. There's many, 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 many people in town for South by Southwest. There's a lot of streets closed off. I could use that as a different example. Same thing with big outdoor music festivals. whole other thing. But I wanted to focus just quickly because, you know, We've got other people uh, besides me, but give you some examples of speci specific ways we're trying to, to balance this 
through regulations of culture and supporting both the live music scene and the neighborhoods, which are, which are vital to our quality of life. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jim. Very informative. Thank you.